Welcome to The Inevitable, a podcast by Motor Trend. Hi there, and welcome to another episode of The Inevitable. This is the Motor Trend podcast, the Motor Trend vodcast about the future of the automobile. Where are we going? How are we going to get there? And what are we going to be racing? But before we get into it, Ed has a special message for you. The Inevitable Vodcast is brought to you by the all-electric Nissan Aria, inspired by the future, designed for the now. And right now, Johnny, we have several questions related to this fantastic place we're at, which is Portland, Oregon. We are in town for the Formula E race. This is the second interview that we've done out here. Uh, Another shorty. But it's a great conversation with the team principal for Nissan's Formula E team, Tommaso Volpe. We'll get to him in a minute. But he's an interesting he's cat. He's an interesting cat. Yeah. I asked you ahead of this event to go out onto your Instagrams and ask for questions related to Formula E. And we actually got several good ones. Mm. Okay. One of which we actually asked our guest to answer. And that was yours, uh, Kyle Connor, Kyle Vadaspec, asked a great question. Uh, let me find it here. I want to know what the technology slash consumer benefit trickles down to a series production vehicle to serve as a consumer benefit for the extreme spending on a relatively low viewership racing series. We asked, actually, we didn't even need to ask. No, he picked he, it up. He, he kind of picked it yeah. up. Um, didn't really get into the, uh, the extreme spending on low viewership, but he did talk about in detail the tech transfer, which several other people asked for. So we won't answer that one. Listen for, uh, for our guests. And it is, it is a good, legit answer, it's too. A good, it's yeah. a, good, it's a hear, great question. Hear. Thank you, you'll Kyle. Yep. And it is a good answer. Uh, but there are some, some other interesting questions in here. Um, do, 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 do. Are there plans? This is Harkins 1997. Are there plans to try solid-state batteries in Formula E as soon as something is available? Yeah, sure. But as soon as solid-state materializes in a way that is both sort of uh, financially uh, af- affordable for a racing series but and sustainable. More importantly, and, and more importantly, durable. manufacturable. Yes. Because as, a, as our buddy Fabrizio Martini told us, the problem right now with solid state is the technology in a laboratory environment is understood. Uh, yes, it's twice as light as lithium ion for the same energy density. However, you can't manufacture it. I forget the exact what he said what it was. Like there's some wafer that it just it has to be super thin and it just shatters. Right. So right now it only lives in laboratories because um, there's no way to scale it. But yeah, I mean, look, you know, if you if you look at the it, it, today is what is I don't even know what, I don't even know what country I'm in. Uh, it's twenty eighth uh, <laughs> of a month. Um, if you were to look at the internet yesterday, the internet all it talked about the internet being the, the car, the small little car internet that I spend way too much time looking at. BMW M5 is too heavy. It's more heavy than a Bentayga. It's heavier than a, a this and a that, and it's real, real heavy. So, getting weight down in EVs uh, is you got the performance, right. you know. You look, you look at the the Lucid Sapphire. I mean, <laughs> I've said, I, look, I've long said it. Yeah. Weight is the final frontier. Yeah, you, you, we got the range. That same Sapphire, yeah. uh, you know, is over four hundred miles. Lucid makes a couple of vehicles that are over five hundred. The Gravity supposedly is going to do even more than that. And if you look at the people, you know, you you, you could split up EV naysayers into a couple different groups. But one of them is like the the serious uh, petrol head, the the gearhead, the car enthusiast. And, you know, if if um, the the GT3 went up 60 pounds from the 991.2 to the 992.1 and they were screaming bloody murder. So, <laughs> you know, you, you got to start getting weight down. Right. And uh, solid state maybe is is the uh, the silver bullet that does that. There might be other technologies that, that do that. You know, it's just, you we know. Got, we got, th- yeah. Farley, Jim Farley, uh, uh, CEO of Ford, he... Um, he wrote a really interesting uh, LinkedIn um, message uh, today, yesterday, that he was just saying he's f- how about how he's fallen in love with um, you know a, the electric car, much to his chagrin. This is a guy that races Cobras, right. and and he's loving driving around in his Lightning. Um, and I bring him up because he said something that I've said, and uh, he said you know early innings, and I've always tell people when they're like EV stink, and I'm like I'm like dude, we're in like you know the seventh game of the World Series of gasoline cars. This has been going on for right. over 100 years. Man, they're good. However, 
EVs, we're we're you know the start top of the, of the season. first we're, or bottom we're in spring of, training. Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe we're in so, the first inning now. Right. Um, and um, you know things are going to change and things are going to develop and things are going to get a lot better. And and battery tech, it, we already know it's going to get better. Right. Mercedes just came out with the electric G wagon. Uh, you know, and I, I forget the exact range, like it's like 260 miles. Well, they also put out a little press release that said, hey, within 18 months to two years, we'll have this new battery technology. Same size battery is going to get 20% more range. Uh, they're going to switch to a to a silicon um, cathode instead of a graphite one. So, it, yeah, um, we want stuff like solid state batteries. I don't know if it will be solid state batteries. I heard, I think Fabrizio told us it would be like 2028, 29, before that's a viable, producible technology that's five years away. Um, but t we, we have more questions. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So a couple more questions from your post. Uh, surprisingly, a lot of them we actually answered. So I'm just going to cover yeah, yeah. them off for, for these uh, f and say thank you to Felipe Viana. What was the most surprising strategy related to efficiency that you found on your experience with the car? And again, I'm not, we're not going to answer this one because our guest actually goes into detail on strategies related to Formula E, electric vehicle racing, uh, specifically around efficiency and conserving energy. So great question. Thank you, Felipe. But, but real quick, I mean, there is, there is a, you know, he talks about how di different mentalities of different drivers actually plays into that. Um, but, but, uh, you know, also as when you drive electric cars, like you do drive them a little bit differently. You still get to where yeah, you're going, yep. but it's, it's kind of, it, it gamifies it in a way. Yes. And it, it call it, he calls it the most intelligent form of racing. Yeah. It makes, so. it makes you think while driving. Yes. It okay. Is, yeah. And here's another one from, uh, Eric Reese camp. Okay. Mm -hmm. With production car <laughs> EVs, you'll love this with production EVs being overpowered, why are the race cars more <laughs> similar to <laughs> Nissan Leafs? They should be the new age Can Am cars. Yeah, okay. I think that's a great observation, I right? Know. Like that's a terrible observation. So yeah, I've always I've long said, like, what do we need thousand, twelve hundred horsepower? Because uh, he's never cars. driven he's never driven a Pinot Frina Batista, which has nineteen hundred horsepower, and you realize that's the right amount of horsepower. Right. I think uh, uh, ultimately, it would be great. Let's uh, let's race that uh, that Batista around three laps around this track and see what happens. How right? dare you? Like How that, that's kind you? of the point. You for for to make to make racing exciting, interesting, marketable, uh, in a format that you can you know have car commercials. You need the race to be a certain length. Yeah. And I mean, a, and by the way, these Formula E cars are no slouch. Like they are super fast. Oh, They're yeah. zero to sixty now in like one point eight seconds. I think the Gen 3 car does 200 miles an hour. Yeah. It's and it has 470 horsepower. Now, to his point, though, like, yeah, you know, uh, unlimited rules Formula E, sure. Can Am Formula E. Like, yeah. let's go. I'm, I'm here for it. Yeah. I, I'm so, into it. Yeah. Great question. Thank you, Eric. And then last one, which is, uh, uh, this is Grid Connections. I don't know who, that, who it is, but he's tagging on to, to Kyle Connor's question. Um, what is what is the Nissan team most excited about in the current gen versus the upcoming Gen Four race cars? We touched on it a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I think part of it is that they got to be more actively involved in the development of that next generation, the Gen Four car. So they're looking forward to that because they have had more sort of development control. And then two, how is Nissan looking to stand out from the other Formula E teams? I mean, better better strategy, better better efficiency. Well, actually, again, I guess we'll talk about it. Yeah, they've had a great year. And the pressure's on next year for them to win. So, um, but, but back real quick to the first part of that question. It yep. sounds like the Gen 4 cars are going to get a uh, recharge and a pit stop. Right. And I think that'll be a real game changer because that'll, that'll let the races kind of go a little bit, potentially go a little bit quicker. I, 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 I heard that. I, just, I don't believe it because if, if anything, right, if you could manage, you wouldn't, you wouldn't pit at all. You know, uh, but, but I don't know. I, I could see getting, getting a can. full battery all of a sudden. But that stuff's like 30 seconds long. That's nuts. It's, I mean, th it's going to be like a 600 kilowatt <laughs> charge. Okay. It's going to be, I don't All know. Right. I, that, I think that'll be cool. And, Anyways, and yeah. fast charging is something that like consumers want. So right. there could be a huge carryover right. of technology there. Right. So, so yeah. great questions. Thank you so much. Uh, drop them more of them into our Instagram DMs or mm -hmm. shoot mm -hmm. us an email at Motor Trend. And we'll do more posts like this. But, but yeah, Motor Trend at Motor Trend .com. Uh, I'm Johnny Lieberman on Instagram. This is Lowdown. L O H D O W N. And let's talk about our guest, Tommaso Volpe, team principal for Nissan's Formula E team. Uh, this guy has basically spent the last half of his career with the broader Nissan and Infinity group in motorsports. 
Uh, so oh, he's been so maybe with some some little F1 in there. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> but with Nissan and Infiniti in particular, he's been director of global motorsports for Infiniti Motor Company. He's also been the GM of the Formula E project, and he's now the team managing director and team principal. Uh, prior to all of that, he worked for Group Lotus in their F1 program on retail merchandising, and he did some marketing for Ferrari, and before that, some consumer products marketing. Uh, super sharp guy. Uh, and funny. Funny. Tell funny some guy. great stories about what they're looking to do here in this championship uh, in Formula E racing with their team. So without further ado, let's talk to Tommaso Volpe. Tommaso Volpe, thank you so much for taking time out of your super busy schedule on race weekend. Um, let's just jump right into it. Well, real, yeah, because before we the camera started rolling, I said, yeah, you know, this podcast is basically about the, what cars are going to be like in 15 years. And you said, easy. Yeah, well, sarcastic. That's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sarcastic. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's an Italian easy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, super, <laughs> super easy. Gotcha. Uh, okay. <laughs> we're, we'll get, hey, we're going to get there. I just so, wanted to know if he knew something we didn't know. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He has all the answers. If okay. I did. Yes. <laughs> 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 you wouldn't be working today. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, what? Uh, we're late in the season here for Formula E. There's, well, I think, what, four races left. Nissan is technically still in contention. What are you – what's your plan? This, what's your plan? <laughs> to win. To win. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, this season for us has been uh, surprisingly good, to be honest. We knew that uh, the team was improving a lot last season. We could see already a huge difference in performance between the beginning and at the end of the same season. So we were expecting us to keep on progressing. Uh, and uh, uh, But to be perfectly honest with you, we were a little bit even surprised by how fast we we were putting everything together it's, it's not easy uh, competition is becoming harder and harder and uh, but at the moment we are in third position in the championship it's going to be hard to keep it but if we can finish there by the end of this season it would be a great result okay to to what do you attribute this um this great success this year like i know you said it's it hasn't been easy uh, Anything in particular? Well, uh, f n not that one thing, but many things we have been putting together since Nissan bought the team two years ago now. And uh, we had to restructure the whole organization. We couldn't do it at the, first, the very first season because of time you start racing and you cannot really start changing too much. But we, we started implementing uh, fundamental changes in the organization in terms of talents. W we had a very strong core of talents coming from the previous uh, company, let's say, but uh, we had to inject new, uh, fresh uh, <laughs> talents and uh, and also we changed procedures, process, tools we use, and we, uh, we moved to a new workshop, so this also made a difference, and we had different things. We changed our driver lineup, and um, of course, we were expecting this to pay back, but as I said before, we were even surprised on how fast this this uh, mm. uh, turned out being the right direction. And uh, uh, it's not done yet. We are still uh, working on some additional uh, improvements because the objective of Nissan is to to win the championship or right. at least to fight for the championship. And we are third in, in 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 this moment, but the gap with the top two teams is still there and. We have to fill this gap anyway. Right. And some of that new talent, um, like Charlotte and Christina, we just talked to, mm -hmm. like they're the your your uh, yes. your, your, your engineers, like uh, two of, of our engineers, but yes. uh, they are very very good. Uh, Christina joined in uh, September. Yeah. S oh wow. So she's uh, relatively new in the organization, and uh, uh, she was amazing. I mean, it took her one month to understand where she was. <laughs> Because the culture in our team is very different from uh, other teams where she worked before. Sh uh, sh oh, oh, yeah, Christina, six months. Like from September. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. Oh, and okay. Uh, but after one month, I would say two months, she started to to give her inputs. And um, I remember a very precise moment actually in the testing in Valencia. Um, so she had been with the team for two months more or less, and. Uh, she was uh, surprisingly quiet the first days and and in the garage you know we are a very inclusive team and uh, there are no egos everybody has the time and the space to express his or her own opinion and we listen to everyone and uh, so 
there is a lot of talking uh, in the garage and she was a little bit quiet the first days and we were like okay well <laughs> she's doing her <laughs> her things her calculations her and then all of a sudden she the very last day she just said ah guys i have some ideas i think we should change this and this and that and and oliver i think gained like two tenths of a second per mm. lap like that so well, she was comfortable she was home in spain yeah, yeah, for, yeah you know. for sure and, <laughs> and uh, if since then of course not just her uh, all, all of them but uh, she started to work with everyone and then in in january we had david joining as well and then of course charlotte charlotte was already there and right. then she can you talk about how like Formula E has evolved since you got involved with it? Because the cars just seem so much better sure. this season, and it sounds like next season they'll even be better. Yeah. But like just just the evolution and and, you and how quick it is. Because you've essentially been with this program since it's four since years. It's, yeah. Okay. Since yeah. the start. I mean, it's uh, no, uh, not really overlapping. Well, overlapping the ownership portion. Uh, yeah. Uh, Nissan entered Formula E two years before I joined. Okay. Um, but. We we basically started being in Formula E for Generation Two, mm -hmm. and and I joined let's say during the second season Generation Two, and um, but in Generation Two the the, the operations were it, uh, Nissan was not in full control really of the operations. We we were in partnership with an existing uh, very successful racing team, mm -hmm. and that was called Nissan E Dams because of the ownership uh, which was. Uh, basically, dams as a company and right. a little bit complex, actually. But um, that's how racing is. Uh, yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and um, but it was yeah. great. It was working well. But at some point, what happened is that in uh, at the end of 2020, uh, Nissan unveiled our Ambition 2030, which is a very ambitious <laughs> corporate objective to uh, towards electrification. Mm -hmm. We 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 plan to to sell 60% uh, of our cars electrified by 2030. So all of a sudden this that's project... coming up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And this is the day after tomorrow. Is yeah. <laughs> is, is, so it's very close. And all of a sudden this project, which was already interesting because gave us the opportunity to promote our already strong uh, expertise in, in electrification. We are a pioneer in, in, in this technology in mobility. All of a sudden, had the potential to become our halo project global uh, halo project to promote this big transformation coming up and uh, but then uh, my conversation with the board was uh, i'm very happy i'm <laughs> in the right place <laughs> uh, and but uh, if we really want to make it a pillar uh, for the brand promotion the global level we really need to take full control of what it is Mm. Good or bad, we need to be like our, the, the factors of our destiny in the sport. And uh, and also this way you have full IP and you can really use it for the core business to improve also your cars, thanks to Formula E. And uh, so the decision was taken to, to, to buy everything. And this is where Nissan Formula E team was was born. Uh, on time to start as a f for the first time as Nissan Formula E team for the first season of Generation 3 which was exactly last year. That's why I was saying last year for us was really the beginning. And then this year is this the year where we want to consolidate ourselves as a, as a team to be a, a proper tier one team to fight for the championship. And next year is party time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's going to be tough. Uh, next, well, year, hey. next year pressure's the on, pre right? The pressure is on, yes. Next yeah. year, the objective is to fight for the championship. Then sure. maybe we'll be here talking yeah. about... But I mean, if you're in third... Being third yeah, yeah, or not, tenth you know, in the po championship. Podium's okay, you know. No, no, but... Uh, we, yeah, you got to win. Because you have a new car coming too, right? Yeah, exactly. And this new car actually has been uh, directly influenced by Nissan R&D as well. Because the moment we bought the team and the operations, we had also this... Uh, possibility to have a back and forward of technical learnings between our advanced R&D department in Japan and the Formula E operations which are based in France and uh, so of course this was, this was a little bit too late if you want for the first car in, in, in generation 3 but the second one coming next year has been more directly influenced by by Nissan know-how. And can you, can you talk about any specifics uh, how it's been influenced? Well, there are different areas. Uh, in Formula E, the manufacturer 
can find performance mainly on the on the energy efficiency of the hardware so the powertrain which is bespoke in, 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 in uh, developed by the manufacturer and uh, so to push as much as possible the percentage the average percentage of energy that coming out from the battery becomes traction mm -hmm. and uh, and then there are all the software there are different software different tools uh, but let's say the energy management software is is a key one and the, uh, all these softwares on regulating the or managing the dynamics of the car uh, at the end also influence the energy the vehicle uh, efficiency of uh, the ve vehicle efficiency so not just the efficiency of the hardware but how efficiently the dynamics of the car hmm. um, is managed during the race so if i'm reading between the lines it sounds like uh, for a consumer product like a car I yeah. might be able to buy I might be able to buy it would be like the the um, the software that would yeah. probably be that not not so much the motors so, uh, so it, uh, this is something <laughs> that is is very surprising when I, I say for the first time to general public in reality the, te the technology is exactly the same no you sure we have a battery an inverter a gearbox and the right. motor and uh, we 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 don't we cannot use the same parts from a Formula E car to a normal car. But the way we push this well, level, well, you could, you know. uh, well, could, but <laughs> it will <laughs> last. Uh, it will last uh, <laughs> yeah. twenty thousand, thirty thousand kilometers. Right, right, Hopefully, right, right. our Nissan Leaf can <laughs> reach one million longer. kilometers. Right, right, right. Um, no, but the, the 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 way we design uh, the the these parts, uh, of course, we have a different context in terms of budgets and materials we can use but still you can generate ideas that step by step can be cascading into the core products and so to answer more precisely yeah, yeah. to the question you asked before the gearbox of next year season is probably the part that is generated the biggest improvement for us in the energy efficiency and uh, Actually, in that case, this has been done using ideas that came from Nissan R&D. Mm -hmm. So things that were tested uh, for uh, um, road cars, mm -hmm. um, uh, gearbox. And uh, so sometimes it's not even necessarily the solution that you ended up using in the core business, but the big company like Nissan, you can imagine how many solutions they right. They're, they're they researching they, everything. They research before arriving to the final production. And, and I can see how. So you have in the in your database so many ideas that you have tested, and then you can pick some to use in the in Formula E and vice versa. But I can see how like you know technology transfer would be, you know, in Formula E. Obviously, when you go to break, you want as much regen as, Regeneration as possible. As well. But guess what? You know, as a as a, a consumer car, I want that too. You exactly. Know? It's so but the thing with electric vehicles, they haven't been successful uh, as much as in the last years, only because of, of mainly, but I would say is the main obstacle. It was the battery. Yeah. And um, because in fact, the acceleration of an electric vehicle is uh, is much faster than yeah, an internal combustion engine. And so, in fact, electric vehicles can be much more fun to drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but there was this strong limitation. That's why the first electric vehicles were city cars or cars which were not designed to be fast because the battery couldn't support for right. too long the, the push of the performance. Now, and that's why the efficiency is the crucial element. Yeah. And that's why this is an efficiency race, is an energy race. If right. you go into Formula E works, it's, all a, it's not the brutal performance on one lap, which we, have in qualifying right. but then during the race is how intelligently you use a given amount of energy in order to finish in front of everyone right so this and this exercise is is a combination of what is your energy efficiency in the hardware to start with so how efficiently you mm -hmm. transport this energy into real traction and the average perfor percentage is higher than 95 percent i cannot give you that so but that's, imagine but that's wild that's, a, that's, that's wild. very high yeah, but yeah, then yeah, yeah, still yeah. you fight with <laughs> all the others <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. on okay if i use this one percent of energy in this lap am i gaining more than if i use it this one percent more in three laps time in right. a corner when i'm fighting so at that's the, end, the strategy is very intelligent that's the chess game yeah. is is exactly huh. is a very intelligent racing and we learn as manufacturers so much because this is exactly what the software and the control units in the electric vehicles do. 
Right. The only difference right. is that the driver is alone. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But so, you're trying to maximize, like, you know, the consumer's putting in, you know, 65 kilowatt hours of, of energy. Let's get them the most exactly. mileage possible. And that's why you have different right. settings. You can choose a uh, sport drive, and then in that case, you are less efficient. You can choose, right. like, a more uh, eco drive, and the control unit adapts. Right. And, the, and the, we are also trying to make vehicles in the future that adapt with the artificial intelligence automatically to the way the consumer is using the vehicles yeah, yeah. to correct. Right, so, right. so if I can summarize, what I'm hearing is because, you know, Nissan just ended production of the R35 <coughs> GTR, <laughs> uh, which was internal combustion, one of our favorites, former motor truck Absolute, car of the year. Yeah, we love that thing. Uh, so you're saying the next one is going to take all of these learnings from Formula <laughs> E in terms of um, uh, high efficiency and uh, fun to drive and uh, rapid discharging of electrical and power. Brutal power for, brutal for power qualifying. And this, for qualifying. And this transmission, right, for this. <laughs> I mean, th the Internet is going to explode if we d divulge, and we're not at all, I don't know, Nissan's going to build an electric GTR. Mm -hmm. But everyone seems to think, because they've shown that um, the concept, Hyperforce, I think, which mm -hmm. very much looks like a GTR. Yeah. Do you have any comment on <laughs> any of this? <laughs> Is the comment? very first time someone asked <laughs> me about the Oh, yeah, very <laughs> first time. <laughs> sure. Very yeah, first exactly. time in the last the 20 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, w nothing is confirmed, but uh, you can imagine that a company which is transforming uh, itself into... Uh, um, it's not just about electrification, by the way. Of course, electrification is the primary investment for us, but we are going into a sustainable mobility world. And electrification is one of the key technologies, but together, together with autonomous drive and, and uh, uh, connectivity that will lead mobility into a more intelligent mobility and a more sustainable mobility. So because this is an irreversible transformation, I would bet that the moment we should produce a new, <laughs> a new GTR will be part of this uh, process, but nothing has been comfort okay but back Good to answer. what you were saying about you know the, the intelligence of this race it's really not that different than traditional racing because you're, you're always it was always pit stop strategy fuel strategy true you're all you know tires you're, you know it's less is is brought to the extreme with formula e of course they because it's because uh, yeah. in fact uh, in most of the traditional racing tire um, drivers have to manage tires yeah in an intelligent way if there is refueling then the team has to manage strategically when to do it, calculating the time you lose. Yeah, I'm, I'm or just in any of case, you have tires. Racing, but, yeah, but they don't yeah. have to manage the power of the car. I mean, they manage it by pushing right, right, yeah, push, as push, much yeah, as they yeah, can yeah. by uh, while right. managing tires. Right. In our case, they need to manage tires and they need to manage how they use the power and how, how to use the power and how to regenerate the power. Shall I regenerate more in, in these five laps because is, at the end of the day, I will gain more? Uh, or shall I push more? So you start, to make it very simple, you start with a given amount of energy, which is the same for everyone. Everybody, yeah. And a, a given amount of uh, power output, because the power of the motor is fixed by regulation. So is again, the efficiency of the transformation of the energy into power, which can be different. But if you were not regenerating, you will stop around 40% before the end of the race. <laughs> right. Because this is uh, how much is the gap between what we have and what we have to regenerate, around 40%. Wow. So imagine how complex it is. Okay, I need to regenerate around 40% of the energy, otherwise I don't even finish the race. Right. So when is the right moment to do it? Do you, do well, you find that certain drivers are better at that? Because I was yes. just, just going to say, like, like a traditional race car driver, the guys I know, you know, tip of the spear, <laughs> just sprint, yeah, sprint, sprint. Of course. And like then you can't do that here. Yeah, the Nissan drivers are the best. <laughs> 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 we haven't shown it yet, but uh, it's just a matter of... That's good. I like that. No, that's good. definitely yeah. there are like three, four, five guys who are excellent on that. How, um, do, you f how do you find them? Right? Like, uh, wait, like where, where does that... Because Johnny's right. Where, I was going to ask. We've, we spent a lot of time talking with Christina and Charlotte about the hardware. But no. we're, with you, we're talking a lot about not just the hardware, but the human element. What makes a driver good at being fast and efficient? And yeah. is that... Like, how do you find that guy? Because most of the time they're just yeah. flat out and they're going to wear That's all they want to do, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. 
Well, uh, where to find them is a is a or big train it? You had to train it. Is a big challenge for Formula E to be honest, because there are not junior categories preparing to the energy management. Whilst uh, to go to Formula One, for instance, you have a very standard sure. pattern. Cards, uh, formula, formula, uh, formula three, this, formula, formula two, two, Formula yeah, One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's becoming almost like a very conveyor belt. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> Um, Formula E, there is no junior category uh, with full electric powertrain, so no series uh, teaches you the energy management at that level. So, uh, so the, 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 the challenge we have is that we all look for fast tra drivers, but there is always an unknown on how well they can adapt to, to Formula E. And in fact, we have examples of uh, very fast drivers that when they came to Formula E, they didn't really succeed mm -hmm. and they left. Sure. Um, so uh, one thing, definitely, you try to test them before, of course, at the simulator. It's not that you put them at the jump right. in the car. So you try to understand if they are good at adapting to that. One thing that I would say is a fundamental element is the pure intelligence <laughs> of the person. <laughs> you really need to be very clever. And very intelligent. I mean, these 22 drivers are very, they are not just talented, they're really clever. You need to be clever to understand how to drive in Formula E. Interesting. Yeah. But you find, I mean, uh, look, I mean, you know, I, I know some pretty successful drivers like Scott Dixon, for instance. Like, man, but he's a smart guy. Of course. Of course. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not so saying that yeah, in yeah, another yeah. category <laughs> you don't need it. They're all, they're all, they're all, all sports. Yeah. Well, yeah. I know, I know, I could name a couple uh, drivers uh, uh, there. No, but uh, I, I think <laughs> when you succeed in everything, yeah. Uh, you, yeah, you, are in, you are a clever person. <laughs> anyway. Sure. Okay. Sure, so, sure. but what I mean is that if you want, they really need to use their intelligence yes, in Formula yes. E. It's, it's, as it's much as their talent. Right. Yeah, right Whilst right. in other category, you you are a clever guy, but maybe when you are on, you yeah. the only thing you, it matters for you is to go as fast as possible. Yeah, and, and I know a lot of guys that that that's yeah they would they would just struggle. I've seen yeah. them. I've seen them drive. I've seen them race. But so, you've you've now talked to us about how it's a it's a it's a race of intelligence and efficiency. In your background, you have F1 experience. You also worked with Ferrari. Is this as exciting as as Formula One? And Formula One gets all of the glory right now because yes, of sure. Drive to Survive, and it's, yes. it's the best of the. And it's, it's Formula One. I mean, it's America. Been well, here, but in America yeah. in particular, we went from like zero F one <laughs> races, and now yeah. we have three cities. Yeah, 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 and then yeah. you can go to Canada and you can go to Mexico. Uh, right. Is it as exciting? Is, is there something you wish? The layman, the person who's never watched it, what, what would you want to tell them about what what makes Formula E exciting? So I think Formula E. Is, uh, is first of all, I love Formula One. I worked there for many years, so I am one of those that mm, don't really see a competition. I, they are just different. I love yeah. Formula sure. One. I love Formula E. And w as far as my job is concerned, I've never been as happy as now, though, <laughs> because uh. maybe the role is different anyway. Right. So, so I'm I'm super happy and uh, proud of what the team is achieving. Uh, as a sport, I would say, again, they are different. Uh, Formula is very short. It's, uh, it's more like MotoGP in a way. I mean, it's not as short um, as MotoGP, but uh, everything happens in a much shorter uh, period of time compared mm -hmm. to Formula One. There is more action going on. It's you more passing. More <laughs> passing and because of this game. So right. it's, it's more. And I, I would say one thing that I found very interesting uh, and I... When I talk to drivers, even professional drivers, they, they confirm that is that if you follow Formula E and try to understand how it works, which is pushing, managing energy, then you see the percentage of battery there and the regeneration plays such a crucial role. You start enjoying more driving electric vehicles for yourself as well, mm -hmm. because typically on an electric vehicle, you have a dashboard that tells you how much you are generating where you brake mm -hmm, and uh, mm -hmm. then you are scoring this energy and then you can go faster and you can push and you can have fun with that. So I think that entering into the logic of Formula E gives you also the excitement when you actually use an electric vehicle. Because you kind of, and this is typical in motorsport, people love motorsport because they have these fantasies of driving themselves when they are in the car. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I think with Formula E, this is very strong as well and it's very like immediate because then you see the battery percentage on your own dashboard and uh, Same battery, and yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's quite fun. And, and well, you start wondering, yeah. have I bought 
a car which has enough energy efficiency. Right. Well, <laughs> well you know, in the next uh, that GTR, that R36, I can imagine yeah. in that in that multi-information display, the gauges now will go from just being the like the spider graph or the in the G ball to now maybe a battery of exactly. efficiency and you know all of exactly. that. Exactly. So and auto learning and yeah, yeah, look yeah. you are not braking quite efficiently guy. <laughs> you right. need to brake better right. in this in this lap. No, I mean a lot but a lot of EVs already do that. They have they have like yeah. you know green coaching or whatever they call. It. I think that I had a Nissan Aria that yes. was it was like you know it would tell you I think it was an Aria, but one of them would yeah. tell you how successful your braking was. Yeah. It was like you, Correct. You, you, that was 97% of what you, sh you exactly. could have got 100, but you got 97. And this, and this yeah. with electric vehicles, can be done more easily than sure, uh, of a combustion engine. So Because it's all software. Uh, exactly. Yeah. It's all software. Right. Exactly. Okay. That. So yeah. it's, it's amazing the connection that you can make, not only from the technical standpoint, the learnings, but also visually the way it works between the sport and the core business is, 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 is a world that we haven't explored yet, but I'm sure will give us a lot of uh, opportunities as a car manufacturer. Okay, we're getting the high sign here that we're gonna wrap it up. So I just wanna ask you one question. Again, on the, I, I, for, the, I, for the fan, for, for somebody you wanna convert, say, hey, I love Leclerc, I love uh, you know, Verstappen, I'm watching Formula One. What would you tell, what part of the race should they watch for what is the most exciting point for the spectator is it early is it late is there a moment that you should just be watch out for when a driver does this is there anything well two things the f the dual phase in qualifying that doesn't exist in any other motorsport okay. this yes. is really one shot you have two cars alone and on on track just trying in one shot to to get the best lap time this is a one-to-one -one like tennis. is is like doesn't happen in any other motorsport. This is really exciting. I found it very exciting. And then the race, I would say, is difficult to say. There is attack mode, which is quite interesting. But definitely, the end of the races is uh, is always super exciting because you have all the games that the the the, the different drivers have put together. They come to an end, and you see who is actually the winner. Right. Who is the guy and the team who has put together the best strategy at the end to actually be in the best position compared to the others? Because you've gone from this conserve, 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 conserve play around, blah, blah, blah. And then you have, uh, at the end, y they all build their, o their own strategy, which sometimes is super obvious, other times is less. And then at the, uh, the last 10, even less laps, they all start, it's like poker, right? right. They start to put down all yeah, the cards. Yeah. All in, all in, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then you see who has done the better job. And, uh, and I like it. It's, it's super cool. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you, yes. Tommaso. This was fantastic. Wish we had more time. Yeah. But uh, yeah. good luck this weekend and thank with, you. The, with the, the championship. Thank you very much. Thank you. The Inevitable Vodcast, brought to you by the all-electric Nissan Aria. Inspired by the future, designed for the now.